In the past few weeks, we have witnessed the market swing from greed to extreme fear owing to the spread of coronavirus. While this current situation is unique in many ways, fear and greed are still the common denominators of every financial crisis. So in our three-point analysis today, we will see what financial lessons one needs to learn from historical stock market crashes. 1. The Great Depression Well, the Great Depression of the late 1920s and early 1930s was triggered by a stock market crash in October 1929 and remains the most tragic economic downturn in recent history. The event occurred at a time when the economy was booming. In August 1929, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York raised interest rates in order to reduce the money supply and tighten prevailing credit conditions. However, the sudden hike in interest rates dampened the existing market euphoria and stock market crashed following two months later on 29th October 1929. The steep 25% drop in US markets on a single day destroyed the confidence of the industry participants. Consumer spending collapsed and investments took a pause. Now, businesses suffered huge losses because of this and nearly half the banks in the US collapsed in the next four years. The industrial output in the US contracted by more than 40% and unemployment peaked at near 25%. The market capitalization of a NYSE was less than one-tenth of what it had been at its peak. A slew of economic policies and measures were then undertaken to restore the confidence in the economy. The regulatory framework across banks was also strengthened. New industrial policies were introduced to create job opportunities as well. Now, one of the key takeaways for investors here was that growth in any economy hinges on the health of the banking and financial system and the credit institutions. The key cause of the Great Depression was that failure of Federal Reserve to provide stability to the banking and the financial markets. 2. Black Monday Black Monday refers to the catastrophic stock market crash that occurred on Monday, October 19, 1987. The crash occurred worldwide starting in Hong Kong and then spreading throughout Asia, Europe and United States. The Dow Jones and S&P 500 indices crashed 22%. One of the major contributing factors to the severity of the Black Monday crash was computerized trading. Software programs developed by banks, brokerages and other firms were set to automatically execute stop-loss orders, selling out positions if stocks dropped by a certain percentage. The other big contributor was also the portfolio insurance trading strategies that hedged the stock market portfolios by selling short S&P 500 index futures contracts. Now, both these systems created a dominoes kind of an effect, continually accelerating the pace of selling as the market dropped. The 1987 crash was a significantly shorter lived one or a phenomenon in the market. In less than two years later, the stock markets did recoup virtually all its losses and resumed a strong bull market run as well. A key consequence of the Black Monday crash was the development and implementation of circuit breakers that temporarily halted trading when major stock indices declined by a specific percentage. Flash crisis, uh, crashes like a single-day collapse of the Dow Jones on Black Monday taught investors to spread portfolio risk around and build a portfolio that could withstand extreme conditions. 3. Global Financial Crisis This crisis refers to the period of extreme stress in the global financial markets and the banking systems between mid-2007 and early 2009. The downturn in the US housing market acted as a catalyst for the crisis, the spread across the rest of the world and push the world's banking system towards the edge of the collapse. Now, in the years leading up to the crisis, banks and financial institutions in the US extended large amounts of housing loans to subprime borrowers who had lower credit rating and higher default risks. The inability of borrowers to repay their loans led to a correction in housing prices and consequently banks, investors and institutions who had exposure suffered huge losses. In September 2008, Lehman Brothers, one of the world's biggest financial institutions, went bankrupt. Extreme risk aversion, poor business and consumer confidence as well 
deleveraging and the resultant deterioration in economic conditions actually led to a growth contraction across economies and was the most pronounced in the developed economies such as the US and the UK.